So this information truly can be a breakthrough. And what I really want to do is free you from fear. So many people walk around every day afraid someone's going to sneeze on them, they're going to get a cold or the flu. I mean, at one stage, I used to do 275 days a year literally traveling and doing programs, and I've never missed a program in my life in 25 years. And I don't say that to beat on my chest. I say because I want you to know that you couldn't be more exposed to germs than I am because I've been virtually everywhere on Earth involved with tens of thousands of people on an ongoing basis, and I don't break down. How do you explain that? Well, you could say, well, that's your belief system, but there's more than just beliefs involved in your physiology and your health. I'm certainly exposed to germs everywhere. The reason is that germs are not enough to describe disease. Ten people can be exposed to the same germ. Not everybody gets ill, as you well know. And as you'll hear as we go to the live seminar, you're going to find that even today at Harvard University, they teach that no one specific germ is an absolute guarantee of having one specific disease. There are so many environmental factors, the amount of stress or emotion that's going on in your life, your genetic tendencies and the things you do to keep your body in balance before you're exposed to such germs or viruses. We've got to be responsible if we're going to get out of fear, get into energy. If we're going to get out of excess fat and into fitness. If we're going to have the kind of joy and ongoing health that we deserve. So let's go to a live seminar now where you get a chance to listen in and let's see if we can figure out why do most people become so fearful about their health and what are some simple common sense approaches we can take that can free us of the fear and more importantly put us in charge? Listen in right now. What I want you to understand today is it's not the principles you're going to learn that are going to make a difference in your health. It's the beliefs you're going to develop about what's most important. And by the way, I said your money, your spirituality, your children, what's the other obvious area you don't want to give up to an expert? Which one? Your health. You can't allow someone to make you believe that your health is such a complex task that only some expert can know what to do. Because I've got to tell you something. The ratio of results that these experts are producing in our culture are not very pretty. In the United States, which is a good example, a good barometer of most of the states represented or the countries represented in this room, one in every two people now die of what? Heart disease. One out of three from cancer. I mean, think about that. That's staggering. Look around the room and imagine half the people here are going to die from a heart attack. That isn't necessarily true to this room. In fact, our job is to make sure that isn't true in this room, but statistically that's accurate. Then look at the ones that are left, one out of three are going to have cancer. Now, there is no excuse for that because those things are completely lifestyle driven. But what we keep doing is treating the effect rather than dealing with the real cause. Dealing where the source of the problem is. That paradigm of treating symptoms is an old paradigm and it doesn't work. And even doctors today know it. That's why today you see more and more doctors are in a, a position where they're looking at things from a totally different holistic point of view. In fact, today, when most people still think germs are the cause of disease, if you read the number one textbook from Harvard Medical School, it makes it clear that germs are not the source of disease. That you can have all these germs in your body and not have the disease. And you can have disease and those germs aren't available. The germs are a sign of life. That the biggest problem is if you create an environment that's polluted, germs are going to magnify. They're going to go crazy and they're going to start feeding and creating their own waste. And their tearing down the body and waste happens only because you create an environment where that's possible. If you've got tons of mosquitoes and you go kill them all, which is the allopathic medicine's approach, right? Pathology is the study of what? Study of disease. Now, if you wanted to be rich, would you study poor people? If you wanted to be healthy, would you want to study people that are ill? That's the way that we've operated from. It's a backwards way of trying to figure out how to get healthy. Because it's not about health. It's about maintaining or dealing with a problem after it's occurred. And very often the way we do that is based upon this concept of the body as a mechanism rather than the body as something that really is driven by the mind and spirit. So today is about let's open our minds to a different set of beliefs and let's be careful about one thing. Most truth in life goes through three phases because there are convictions in society. First, it's totally ridiculed. Second, it's violently opposed. Because if the ridicule doesn't do it, now it starts hitting people's convictions and they get very fearful. When a man suddenly says, no, the earth is not the center of the universe, it's not the center of even the solar system, the sun is, Copernicus said this, what happened to him? First it was ridiculed, then what they do? Stoned him, threw him in jail, right? made him 
have to recant everything, destroy his books, violently oppose. And then the third step, truth becomes accepted as obviously true. Self-evident is the word. All truth goes through those three phases. So for us as people, if we want to grow, we want to get ourselves open to as many things as possible first. The reason I tell you that, again, is your philosophy of health is going to affect your health more than any specific thing you're going to eat or do. Because your philosophy of health is going to determine the choices you make, the way you deal with dis-ease in your body. It's going to determine really the choices you make, and the choices you make are going to determine your physical and emotional and future destiny. So be careful about convictions today. Now, the, the, the metaphor I've used throughout the years, the simple one is look at the example of going to New York City when there's a trash strike. If you've ever been there, it's happened three or four times. Trash will pile up in the city by about the third week so high on the street, it's unbelievable. And they have rats everywhere when this occurs. How intelligent would it be for you to come along and go, look at this trash all these rats brought. You know the trash was there first for the rats to come. But when we think about disease, most of us look around and look for something to blame. Whenever it looks like something's the cause, take a deeper look. It may just be a correlation. And if you respond to that as your principle, you'll live in fear. And worse, you won't change things to make it better. So what I want to give you then is a good example. Let's look at the most modern example of this, which is the flu. Let's think about the flu for a second. The flu. When does the flu have a season in most countries of the world, yes or no? Is it holiday season or the normal work season? Quick, out loud. Holiday season. Raise your hand if it's the holiday season in your country, because in this room we have 76 nations. Raise your hand if holiday season is the primary time in which the flu hits. Raise your hand nice and high so I can see. Now, what happens during the holiday season that might add to toxicity or to a deficiency in your nerve energy? We're using more. Okay, do you tend to eat and drink even more partying, even more intensely than usual, yes or no? Plus, as you're gearing up for the holiday season, do you have your normal responsibilities still very often, yes or no? But then you have additional responsibilities, okay? Plus you have things like the outlaws are coming to town, the in-laws. <laughs> People you're not always thrilled about, but you got to have to deal with. Is there a politics? Is there emotion during this time? Yes or no? Even if you love the holidays and you exert more excitement, does that occur? Yes or no? And in most countries in the world, the holiday season is an extreme of temperature. And in this country, it's the cold season. In some countries, it's the hot season of the holidays. But it's an extreme of temperature. Your body has to use more nerve energy to either cool yourself down if you live in a very hot environment or to heat yourself up if you're in a cold environment. When you're in these environments, you're making more and more demands of energy, and when you use more energy than you can take back, what gets shut off? The elimination process. As that happens, your body's no longer at functional efficiency. As that happens, toxicity builds up. Now, what does this look like? In this country, it starts with Thanksgiving, doesn't it? What happens at Thanksgiving? People sit together and say, it's time to give thanks for our year, for all that we're grateful for. And let's, have, let's thank our body by giving it a really gentle, nutritious, well-balanced meal. Is that what happens? No. What is it? It's called pig out time. And what do people have for Thanksgiving? What do they have? Come on. Turkey. What else is on the plate? Mashed potatoes. What else is there? Gravy. Desserts. One little token vegetable on the side that nobody touches. Pure acid, pure waste, pure poison in mass. And when you eat so much, by the way, do you eat a lot? Eat so much you can't breathe. And you go, you push away the table, I'll never eat another bite again. Pumpkin pie? Okay. Coffee? All right. Isn't that true? And what do you do after that meal? Do you go out and say, oh, God, I feel so good. Let's go out and make, take a nice run. Let's go to the movie. Let's go for a jog. What do you want to do? Boom. Your brain goes into total overwhelm, doesn't it? Your body tries to shut down, you're exhausted. And by the way, when you have that meal that one day, the next day you immediately go on a cleanse, right? And you go, okay, I overdid it, I have the right to overdo it, but now, the next three or four days, I'm gonna eat totally pure, I'm gonna cleanse, I'm gonna drink water, I'm not gonna drink anything else but water, I'm gonna make sure I get lots of nutrients, I'm gonna clean out my colon, is that what people usually do the next day? There's leftovers. Got to have the leftovers. You can't waste them. There are people dying in China. Right? And by the way, is there some stress usually around this time? You bet there is. And does it end there? No, because you say, well, Christmas is coming. You know, 
you know, it's the party time. So do you tend to drink more, yes or no? Eat more, yes or no? You go to the company party, right? You have a good time. You think it's time to see the boss loop. It'll be much more fun to be around him, right? You have fun. And then when that ends, you got Christmas just down the road. You got more stress and more things and more things trying to do and excitement and happiness, energy, energy, energy. And on Christmas, you should have a really small, nutritious meal honoring, you know, the day that this is supposed to be about. No. You eat another huge meal. You have more party, more innovation, and maybe even extreme of temperatures, maybe too. And then on top of all this stuff, you don't finish there because New Year's is around the corner. And New Year's is the ultimate party, isn't it? And what do people do in mass on New Year's? Drink what? Alcohol is the total product of decay. It is pure acid in the system. It destroys cells, it interrupts everything. It overwhelms the body. Now here's what's interesting. When does the flu season hit? That's right, it always shows up late December, early January, usually right after the first. And you know, year after year after year, this bug shows up. And by the way, people know it's a bug, they wake up, and what are their symptoms? What are the symptoms of the flu? Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, chills, aches and pains. Are those the symptoms of a body that's been poisoned, yes or no? Are those the symptoms of a body trying to get rid of poison, yes or no? But when we look for the cause of this to deal with it, we look because we've been conditioned that it must be a germ. So we look for the germ, we look for the flu virus. Not even a germ anymore, not a bacteria, something that actually is alive. We look for a virus. Doctors in this room, correct me doctors if I'm wrong. A virus has never been proven to be alive, none, ever. Everything that's alive has several points. It consumes things on its own. It eliminates things and it has its own free movement. No virus has ever been proven to see that. To see a virus, you have to have an electron microscope. They judge them by shapes. You're seeing now modern medical schools are actually talking about viruses may just be pieces of spent cells. We see them in a particular area and we think it's the cause. There's no more the cause than the rats are the cause. You got to get this waste out. You must cleanse and detoxify your body. If you don't, you're going to pay a severe price. It's uncomfortable. When it's uncomfortable, go, I paid this price because I did stupid things. I didn't love my body. I put things in that didn't belong, or I innervated myself. I need a rest. I need to drink fluids. And I need to get this out of my system, and I'll be fine. I don't want to aggravate it or shut down the process. I've got to let it run its course. If I let it run its course, it'll be healthy. So I just wanted you to listen in on this seminar because I wanted you to realize you don't have to live in fear that there's some fundamental things that if you apply your common sense can free of this. So let's listen in now to another seminar where we're talking about this principle of acid and alkaline and how it can make a massive difference in not only the quality of your life, but the amount of energy you experience day to day. Here we go. Thank you. Well. I came back. <laughs> I missed you. What can I say? <laughs> I came back because I wanted to give you an update, an idea of some of the newest distinctions that I've made. If you've been involved with my work at all, you probably have been exposed to some of the principles. How many of you read Unlimited Power? Say I. If you did, I talked about some of the fundamental principles of living health there. And my goal is really to get you to see you don't have to be afraid of bugs. You don't have to worry that in the middle of your New Year's, some bug is going to wreck your holiday. Okay? That it's really not how it works. So what I thought maybe we'd do is show you a little bit of how we get to pollute our environment. And the way we get our environment polluted is we get out of balance. And you all know that. What happens during the holidays? If you weren't out of balance before, now you're totally out of balance. How many can relate to this? Say I. And that balance is not just the balance that comes from, you know, eating too much. It's all of the stresses we create inside of ourselves which innervate us. But they also do something else that I didn't understand at the level of science before. I understood it anecdotally. But science is now showing us some pretty extraordinary things that can help us to know precisely where we break down. Now, to give you an example. Think of what your body is. 
your body is really this unique system that's working on basically electrical currents tied with magnetism. So think of it as electromagnetism that's actually running you. All the nerves of your body send signals to electricity. There are electrical signals, pulses of electricity. All the cells, all the organs of your body, when they're alive, to be healthy, you got to have healthy cells. they got to be totally energetic. To be totally energetic, they have to have electrical power. What makes that electrical power happen is what we have is a delicate balance in our biochemistry. Chemistry makes the environment possible for electricity to be there. Anything that's going to mess up that electrical balance is going to mess up your cells, it's going to mess up your organs, it's going to mess up your life. So if all these organs in our bodies have this need to send electricity, in fact, nerve signals are nothing but electrical pulses again, then what we've got to figure out is what would mess that up. And then what we're going to do here this afternoon is walk you through the easy ways to make it so your inner environment is totally in balance on a consistent basis. Even when you take it out of balance. This weekend took you out of balance. Because what you've done is you've done the thing that creates breakdown in the body that you've probably been doing for years before you got here, but this weekend may have added to it. And that is the creation of acid. Acid in our systems creates a breakdown of the delicate balance in our biochemistry. Now, you turn on your television, you can't miss a million commercials or somebody comes on and says, I ate the whole thing, Alka-Seltzer, remember those old ads? Or now these days, they don't do that. Now they don't wait till after you're in pain. They go, look, I'm going to eat this Pepsin AC and then it won't hurt. And what is Pepsin AC and all these things? They are antacids. See, if we're eating so well, if we're so smart, how come we're taking all these antacids like they're coming out of our ears? The reason is because we live an acid lifestyle in modern times. Most industrialized nations live acid. Now, what creates acid in the system? Well, the first thing that creates acid is emotions, anger, resentment, frustration. You can take, and in fact, I encourage you to go by your local drugstore and get some of those little pH strips. Those pH strips, you've probably seen them, they're like yellow. You put it on your tongue for a few seconds so you can do it with your urine. And then you put it against colors and it shows you how acid or alkaline you are. Why is this important? Let me, let me clarify this first. Your body, to maintain this powerful, energetic, electrical current in you, has got to have a certain pH, a certain basis of what's called acid and alkaline in the system. It is as important as maintaining the temperature of your body. Your body has to stay at what temperature? Quick. 98.6. Well, here's the other number you better know. On a scale from 1 to 14, 1 is pure acid, burn a hole in steel, and 14 is purely alkaline. The middle then, the balance would be 7. Our bodies need to be at 7.36. That's the ideal, which is slightly alkaline. Now, the portions of your body, like your stomach, has hydrochloric acid in it, and in that area, right, you're going to have more acid. But I'm talking about your blood. The blood, which is the river of life. What takes the oxygen everywhere? The blood. You know, what brings the nutrients? The blood. The blood is the basic source of everything. So your blood has got to be at 7.36. In fact, this is so important, guys, that if this figure were to vary one or two points, you would die instantly. Because what happens is it would change the chemistry where there'd be no electrical power. And imagine an electrical power plant that somebody unplugged. Everything stops. Your organs, your cells, everything shuts down. You're dead. That's how important alkalinity is to your body. Now, most people, though, are constantly testing the body's ability to do this. For example, we go to a cold environment. What does our body do? It compensates, right? It figures out what to do to try and speed up, try and get that warmth to the body so that we can survive. The same thing happens when you take in a lot of acidity in your body. Your body rushes to figure out how to deal with this. Now, the way the body deals with excess acid, and again, what brings acid to the body? Emotions are the first thing that most people never even think about. When you worry, I mean, how does it feel when you worry? What does your body feel like? Can you feel that kind of feeling inside your body, like something's churning? You are creating acids in the system. By the way, conversely, Norman Cousins, who, God bless his soul, an amazing man who was here in Los Angeles, right, teaching at UCLA, if you remember, he cured himself of disease through laughter therapy. He'd watch for eight hours a day all these funny films that cracked him up, and he laughed his way back to health because you can also, through your emotions, can you stimulate your immune system? Can you release positive endorphins, yes or no? 
So when you're talking about my lifestyle, I know people all the time who are so rigid about what they're going to eat, and they're stressed every moment about it. And I'm looking and going, they are not going to be healthy because they're creating acid continuously, which guess what acid does? It strips or weakens the electrical charges around red blood cells. So for example, and I'm getting a little technical, but please stay with me, and I think this will make sense for you. Here's a red blood cell. What does a red blood cell do? Carries what? Oxygen. So you got all these red blood cells in your body. Blood cells, in order to function, have a certain biochemistry, and in order to do that, to have electrical charges. The outside of a blood cell has a negative charge. The reason it has a negative charge is it keeps the blood cells from doing what? Anybody know? Sticking together. If the blood cells stick together, what's going to happen? They're going to suddenly go through the bloodstream more slowly, through the body more slowly, so you're going to get less oxygen. All these little red blood cells got to make it all the way down to little capillaries. Some places they have to go one at a time. So all of a sudden, imagine you've got your body full of sludge. And by the way, that's how most people feel. They sludge through life. Because if you see the red blood cells, they're all clumped together. Now, what happens is the inside of your red blood cell has a positive charge. So when acid comes along, you have an acid diet, which I'm going to talk about also. Acid emotions, acid lifestyle. The acid comes by and it mitigates, it strips or weakens this charge, sometimes takes it completely away. So what do you think these cells start to do? They start to clump together. As that happens, your energy goes to the floor. But that's not the only problem. These cells start to weaken. Does that make sense? They're not as strong as they need to. And as the environment becomes more or more acidic, they not only weaken, but they die. When they die, they release their own acids into the bloodstream. So now you're compounding it. Now remember the example I gave you of pouring water in a glass and you keep pouring and pretty soon it overflows? Well, when you keep pouring acid in the system and it starts destroying cells more rapidly than your body's used to, all that acid builds up to the point where now the environment is really polluted. And what got worse, you basically have negative momentum. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse. So pretty soon you don't know why you have all these aches and pains. Aches and pains are acid. It's a lack of oxygen and acid. And you can find it any part of your body. So what we've got to do is we've got to maintain this balance. You know what your body does? Your body's intelligent. It's ready for this. It's designed for this. Except it's not really designed for what we do to it. Our bodies were not designed for us to be able to process every food the way we do in modern times. And to take in the things that we drink and eat that have no basis in nature whatsoever. So we're putting all this acid in. So the body does. It says, my God, we have an emergency here. We've got to solve this. So the body uses stores of alkalinity to neutralize the acid. You have alkaline reserves, they're called. So the body knows how to do that. But here's the problem. If you keep putting more acid in than the body can deal with, pretty soon, what do you think happens to your reserves? They go down. Pretty soon you don't have any reserves. Now you're in a dangerous situation. Now you're going to start having a major dis-ease start to affect your body. What makes it bad, what tears the process down, other than your initial genetic weakness, is the acid. And whether your genetic weakness is affected or not, is acids go to the weakest part of the body. And so they weaken something that's already in trouble. Is this making sense to you? Okay? It's such an important understanding. So, guess where the body now goes to survive? It takes these acids out of the bloodstream and into the fats of the body. Because that takes it away, the acid away from the vital organs of the body. Because if it gets in the vital organs, you've got real problems. Now, what if your genetic tendency is not to hold much fat? People that are fat tend to actually be a little bit more healthy very often if their arteries aren't clogged because they can deal with more of the acid than somebody who's skinny, interestingly enough. And you can see this in people's blood if you study it. So what happens, it goes into the fat. Now, by the way, picture this. This is the average person that I see. Let's say a woman is an example. She really is committed to her body. The culture has created these anchors that women focus even more on it than men do. Unfairly, by the way. So this woman really wants to make this change. So she really does a really good diet. She really makes all these shifts. And she says, I've got to exercise. But she's so stressed about it, she's creating an immense amount of what? Right? Secondly, when she exercises, she exercises to extreme because she's sick and tired of being overweight. Now, I'm going to get a trainer, and I'm going to kick butt. I'm going to do whatever I can. So she produces massive exercise with massive amounts of lactic what? probably exercises anaerobically more than likely. Can you over-exercise, yes or no? Oh, yes. 
And so now all this additional acids in her body. And she says, wait a second, it can't be my metabolism because I'm not eating a bunch and I'm working out like a maniac. I'll tell you what it is. You're not over fat, you're over acid. You will not let go of the fat no matter how much you exercise, no matter how much you eat right, if you do not create an environment that is more alkaline. You can't. It's a survival tool. Now, I was with the gentleman who introduced this concept to me. I was with a group of doctors from all over the world, from Russia, from Korea, from all over the place. And I went through a week with him studying people's blood. And I just did it as an amateur. I'm not a doctor. It's nothing I haven't used, but I like to understand this stuff with precision. I'm a maniac for that. And while I was there, a group of his patients came in. He's a microbiologist, right? And they came in one after another, and we saw the before and after of their blood after they began to what I'm going to ask you to do, which is alkalize and energize your body. We're going to make sure you get a lot more alkalinity in your diet and in your fluids so that your body can deal with this and not have to pull from your reserves. While we're there, he started showing us what happens here in this situation. He shows us examples. You know how when people get older, very often they shrink? Do you ever wonder why that happens? Do you think it's like, oh, it's just our way back into the ground? We came out of it, went our way up? No. The reason is because when a person lives an acid lifestyle, after you go through your reserves and after you store in the fat, guess what's next? It needs calcium, and so it leaches it from your bones continuously. And so your bones get weaker and weaker, and you get more and more compressed. It's like stealing bone mass almost as a metaphor. It's not exactly how it is from your body. There's no reason for you to shrink, just to give you a clue. Okay? The only reason you shrink is because your bones are weak because you're so acidic, and your body is leaching from it. And you'll begin to break down in all kinds of other ways, too. Your muscles get flabby because acid eats it away. And there are other elements also that affect this to give you an idea. But here's what was really fascinating. I saw so many changes in people that were so dramatic. It would sound like you know, a religious revival. But they're in this doctor's office and all these other doctors studying it. And one woman, which was really neat because she's been studied since she was 14 years old by the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, which is the place that you get the definitive answers in the United States anyway. And so the National Institutes of Health studied her and her entire family, but her personally since she was 14, this woman. She's now 37 years old. The reason her family's been studied is because they have hypercholesterol. There's no one in her family with less than 450 in cholesterol. Yeah, if you're not familiar with it, around 200 would be reasonable. 450 is off the chart. I mean, you're a walking heart attack, basically, right? So, and by the way, that's what's happened. Her father died at 43. Her mother died at 41. Her sister died at 39. She's 37. And the NIH and the University of Utah both have studied her, but the NIH is 14, and they try to use their family as an example, and they tried every diet they could on them, every kind of treatment you can imagine. They put them on low cholesterol, no cholesterol diets. And their cholesterol still rises or stays the same. They've never been able to reduce it. This woman has been doing what I'm going to show you today, alkalizing and energizing, practicing everything I was teaching before, but adding the focus of alkalinity to her diet, drinking a green type of drink that brings more alkalinity into the body. She's dropped 50 pounds in the last six weeks. She's never going to lose weight. Why? She had so much wet in her body quick. So her body's hanging on to it. Now the body's alkaline. It's, it's just let going like crazy, and she's not working out half as hard or anything like that. But the second thing is she's lost already 190 points off her cholesterol in six weeks. Nowhere in her entire, you know, deserves a hand, I agree. Give her a hand. All right? What's cool about this is it's, you know, documented by the NIH because sometimes individual researchers do their thing and people go, oh, so it's really outstanding to be able to see that. So why would her cholesterol go down, though? Cholesterol, you don't need any more cholesterol. Your body, as we most of us know, makes cholesterol. The only reason you get additional cholesterol is you're eating animal products. So you're eating the cholesterol of other creatures and putting it in your body. So with their dead mass, you're taking their cholesterol. Right? Doesn't this sound attractive? Okay? But here's the real problem. You get your body where your blood, you put more acid in. Your blood's got to stay at 7.36 or real close, right? So it's got to do something. Now, it tries to use your fat stores. It tries to your alkaline reserves. It tries to do anything to balance it out. Let's say that you've maxed out those things, and all this acid is going to run through your arteries. What will, they do to your, what will acid do to your arteries? It'll burn a hole in it like that. You'll be dead. You can't have arteries with holes in them, right? So the body says, we need a binding agent. We need something to grab a hold of this acid and protect the arterial wall. 
So it secretes or gathers, if you've had additional cholesterol, the cholesterol, and it puts it on the wall to protect the sensitive linings from all the acid. And by the way, there's no downside of that if you were to then change your diet. But if you keep being acid, the body keeps adding cholesterol until pretty soon there's no room for the blood to go through. But it's like, do I die now or do I got a chance of survival? Does this make sense to you? I mean, this is breakthrough stuff. Now, let me tell you why I'm telling you this and why I found out about this, because I've lived a pretty energetic lifestyle for most of my life, prided myself that I can rock the house, whether it's you know, 2,000 people or whether it's 20,000, for as long as the day can go by. And I did it because years ago I made a huge shift in my life, which is this dietary approach that I'm describing to you and this lifestyle approach. And I freed myself of the fear, which took away some of the acid by itself. Right? You heard earlier I described I was always afraid early in my life I was going to die of cancer. That would create some nice acid for you. So what happened for me is I started to get to the point where I was using much more of my mind for the energy as opposed to my body. Can anybody relate to that? And it's like it's more mental energy and like will. Like I get on stage and crank, but it wasn't like I feel now, which is like that just feels effortless. It was more like, am I going to do one more song? <laughs> kind of like a lot of you were thinking over this weekend, right? So what happened was I'm like, I have this mindset of, you know, I'm an Adonis and I'm humble about it. You know, I've got this energy, I'm going to kick butt, take names. And what happened for me is it started like I was just, by the end of a program, I was wiped. But you know how things happen gradually? So you don't quite notice. It's kind of like, you know, the old metaphor, you put the frog in warm water and you turn up the water slowly, it'll boil to death. You know the old metaphor? You put it in boiling water, it jumps right out. Well, most of us, our challenges come so slowly that we adjust each stage and we don't realize what we've lost. And it's like I feel when I do the Living Health Seminar, I'm almost like trying to tell someone what a rose smells like who's never really smelled one. Because most people have never given themselves the gift of that kind of dynamic energy. They've never had it. Because no one taught them how to have that. And that's my real goal in being here. I want you to realize, I want you to experience that nothing tastes as good as fit, healthy, and vital feels. Nothing. And once you feel that, you'll get addicted to that feeling, and it will change every aspect of your life, your relationships, your finances, everything. Because here we are living in this culture where people value everything more than their body, their money, their career, we'll do anything for our kids, right? All these are the things. And what's the last thing that shows up? Our bodies. And thank God that you know, our bodies are as strong as they are, but we deserve to have them at full tilt. So for me, as I started to say, I started to feel this little bit of loss, so I thought, okay, I know what the problem is. I'm getting toxic. I'm exerting more energy right, on an ongoing basis than I'm building back up. You know, I'm not sleeping, and I'm not resting, and I'm go, 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 go the whole time, and I just need to balance out and cleanse my system. So I decided to do that. Now, I know quite a bit about a variety of sciences that have to do with how to study the blood, and there's quite a bit of research that's been done overseas. And there's a certain type of microscope in the past called a dark field microscope. Dark field mic microscopy, I guess is how they pronounce it. And so years ago I had that, and it allows you to see what you don't see in a traditional blood test. It allows you to see that your blood, unlike traditional science tells you, is not sterile. It's like another universe with all these creatures moving around inside of it. But what's interesting is there's a new microscope out now called an ultralight microscope that allows you to see even deeper. And what you all can, also can see is things like candida or yeast in your blood, parasites. You can see everything, and it's very visual. So before I went on this cleanse, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go look at my blood so I can see how bad it is and also so I can feel the victory afterwards and see it clean up. So I found out about this place that did this new form of microscope work. I went down, looked at my blood. My white blood cells were ripped open and like leaking out. They weren't moving at the pace they're supposed to move. You know, and my immune system was broken down, which probably was how I was feeling inside. I was feeling run down. And I'm thinking, God, you know, I... I know I eat well and stuff, but I thought, no, I'm not. I'm going full tilt. I'm not breathing. I'm not doing the other things that are so important. And I'm exercising like a maniac on top of it, right, because I want to be fit. And so I looked at this, and then what was interesting about it is I was also full of candida. Now, what yeast do in your bloodstream is they eat all your glucose, which is all your energy storage, right, all your sugar. So what that does is you eat, and you're never satisfied. Because you're not getting the nutrients. Remember, taking in nutrition doesn't mean anything. If you don't have proper digestion and assimilation, you have no nutrition. So what happens is along the way, the yeast consume it. So I don't know how many of you can relate to this, but I would find myself, I was so busy, I wouldn't eat all day long. Then about, oh, 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, 
I was ready to eat a human. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I gotta have something, man. I get that state where you gotta have something. How many can relate? Come on, say I. That's because your blood sugar is where? <laughs> Through the floor, right? So I'd find that, and it created a lot of stress, and it created the, my energy being super high, high, and then boom, I'd hit a crash point, man, and I would crash if I didn't go do something. So all of a sudden, I look at this thing, and I can see why. They're just, it's eating it all up. And by the way, you know what yeast does once it eats all your sugar? If you don't give it enough sugar, which it demands, your cravings for sugar are the little creatures inside of you demanding it. If you've got a lot of acid addictions right now, as acid addictions are like cigarettes, or alcohol, or coffee, or you got to have it, and you get yourself alkaline, this is not a willpower thing. You won't go through the headaches and all the crap people do. That headaches is all the acid that's released back in your body now as you start to cleanse. It's in the cells, in the fat. And when you stop getting acid, the body goes, all right, we got a chance to get rid of this stuff. Put it in the blood and let's get it out. When it puts it back in the blood, you get this headache and you're detoxifying, it's called. I'm going to show you how you can detoxify without all the pain, which is really wonderful, by having enough alkalinity to deal with those things. Does that sound good? It's really important, really important. So anyway, the point of the matter is, I look at my blood, and I got candida in there, so no wonder my energy's not as high. Sure, I'm living well, supposedly. Now, what caused the candida? That's the part I want to understand. Because look at me, I eat really well, I really do. I thought, well, you know, candida's feeding on sugar. I don't eat sugar, but, you know, I'm vegetarian. And I see a lot of vegetarians. The meteors always look at them and go, I don't want to look like that. Well, that's because they're eating tofu and drinking milk and eating cheese and eating all that crap that's horrible for them, but also they eat all kinds of carbohydrates that convert into sugar, and sugar ultimately taken in mass becomes acid in the system. It has an acid ash. So does protein has an acid ash. Well, what's left to eat? You know, don't tell me you're going to talk to me about veggies, are you? We're not getting there, are we? Yep. <laughs> but I also want to show you how you can have like a big salad drink a green drink and get most of your alkalinity from that so you can still have the foods you have, maybe in hopefully a little bit smaller quantity because you won't desire it as much as you become more alkaline and more balanced. The point of the matter is I started looking at this and going, boy, I know what it is, is it's the pastas, it's the carbs, and I also I always had fruit from breakfast till noon. I've taught people that for years. I'm dead wrong about that. And the reason I'm dead wrong about that, and I didn't know, and it served me well because fruit cleansed me, it was great, gave me energy. What I didn't realize was we live in a society where most of our food is processed. And as we're eating all this processed food, we're getting so much acid that eating a bunch of fruit on top of it adds that much more sugar and creates more candida. How many follow that? Okay. So I'm not saying fruit's not good. I'm saying you don't want to consume excess amounts of it, especially if you've got a diet that has lots of other carbs in it. Because you're creating an environment. Now follow me. We'll come full circle now. You're creating an environment that these little creatures will proliferate. Right? Because they got a feeding ground. Right? But rats don't come until there's enough trash to feed them. When there's all this trash, they're going to come. And once they get there, they tell their friends. Right? They camp out. And they grow and expand and create more of a problem, don't they? So you don't want to create trash inside. Trash inside starts with the acid. And then it starts to create more and more challenges. And as we do this, as we become more acidic, as we get more sugar in our bloodstream, we create the things that suck our energy away. As I started saying, when they're done with your sugars, these yeasts start to eat your proteins. They start to literally break down your soft tissues and your muscle mass. So if you're real flabby and all that stuff, you know, I don't know the real statistic. There are books that claim, there are some scientists that now claim that as much as 70% of the population is infected with yeast and candida. I mean, it sounds to me extreme, except when you look at the lifestyle of most people, then you go, hmm, maybe it's not extreme. But you can find out very easily by doing a blood test, and you've got to cleanse it out. The good news is you can cleanse it out easily. All you got to do is alkalize the bloodstream because this environment that the yeast grows in has to be acidic. Right? It's the environment, guys. It's always the environment. And the good news is we're in total control of that. And by the way, even your teeth. Think about this. If you talk to your dentist, your dentist has been educated, they'll tell you sugar doesn't burn holes in teeth. It's the sugar as it metabolizes into acid, which all sugars do, it drills a hole in your teeth. It's the acid that does that. Now imagine that acid going through your organs, through your tissues. Imagine that you have a genetic strengths and weaknesses. If yours is in the prostate, gentlemen, the acid will go there. And that's where you're going to experience the biggest problem. If, you are, if it's in your breast that's that situation for a woman, it's going to go there. 
it's going to go wherever your weak point is. If your liver's weak, it's going to go there. The weakest part of your body is where the acids will settle because that part of the body can't clean up the mess as quickly. Does that make sense? And so then you pay the price in your weak place. So you must be alkaline. That's This whole conversation is, number one, how do we alkalize the body? Why do we alkalize the body? Because we've got to have the 7.36. And again, you can do this. You can go pick up all those things, put it in your mouth, and see where you are. So anyway, the point of the matter is, I went and got this blood test to finish the story. I said, what do I do? They said, here's the things you should do. And they said, in 30 days, you can have this totally turned around. I said, show me some examples. So they showed me before and after people's blood. Being visual, that convinced me. So I said, great. So me one who had breast cancer and what her blood looked like. And it scared me because mine was moving in that direction, that kind of breakdown. And they showed me 30 days later, and blood was perfect, right? And she's fine. So I went and did this for 30 days, and I went and had the blood test again because I'm not a believer in, like, I've never promoted supplements because most of it is expensive urine. 90% right? of it just goes straight through you. Your body can't digest it. It's not absorbed. So I went 30 days later, and I looked at my blood, and my blood was perfect. No candida in the system. White blood cells perfect. I knew that before I got there because I felt better than I could remember feeling in probably five or six years. And I think I feel pretty awesome. But I remembered how good I felt before that I'd you know, gradually forgotten. So everything I taught before is totally in alignment with creating alkalinity except eating fruit in the morning till noon. And I've been teaching that for years, so I was an idiot. I apologize. <laughs> but it really worked for me. I mean, it worked at the time. But it has a cumulative effect if you're doing all these other things, too. So I'm not suggesting you can't eat fruit. And I'm going to now become very specific about the principles. But I wanted to give you this overview. Does this make sense to you? Okay? Now, I want to tell you one other thing. There's two words, alkalize and energize. Alkalinity, you now understand how important it is. How important is it? It's life and death. That's how important it is. You've got too much acid, are you likely going to have difficulty losing weight unless you have a genetic tendency not to keep weight at all, yes or no? I guarantee you, you're not going to be able to lose weight if you keep your body in an acid place. Or if you lose weight, it'll be temporary and you'll gain it back. So you've got to understand, this alkalinity is the whole thing. So you've got to alkalize and you've got to energize. Now, what does energize mean? It means, remember, every organ in your body works on this microelectricity, this electrical magnetic frequency. And all of that is happening in your system. When you're eating foods, foods only provide value when they can be converted into the elements necessary for this chemistry that allows electrical charges to continue. Food actually gets to the organs through these little electrical charges. That's how things are moved around within the system. Are all foods equal? Like, are all carbohydrates equal in the amount of electrical alive energy in them? Yes or no? Your common sense knows the answer to that is no. Absolutely not. So we must avoid foods that take away more energy than they provide. Your body operates on a subtle electromagnetic current. Nerve signals are, in fact, electrical charges. Your brain, your heart, all the organs in your body really emit these fields of electrical current. And your cells communicate with each other through pulses of electricity. When we eat food, our food breaks down into the food particles to their smallest size, called colloidals. A colloidal is the smallest possible form of a nutrient particle size. The usual size is, I don't know how to pronounce it, certain microns in diameter. These nutrient particles are then carried to cells via electrical charges. If we eat something, guys, that's lifeless, that really doesn't have the electrical charges in it any longer, then you're not going to get the energy that your body deserves. So you won't get, as I said here, the, the food itself is taking more energy than it's giving if it doesn't give you enough electrical charges. So for example, what kind of electrical charge is available in chocolate cake in megahertz? One to three. Now, by the way, a tumor has 30 electrical charges, to give you an idea, by comparison. A Big Mac has 5 megahertz of energy. Now, before you look at that, maybe I should give you a, a frame of reference. Each of the organs of your body has a certain amount of energy, electrical energy, that can be measured in megahertz for it to be functioning healthfully. The average of your core organs, like your brain, your heart, your lungs, is 70 megahertz. So just think about this. If you need 70 megahertz of energy... And your primary diet is made up of Big Macs, 5 megahertz, chocolate cake, 1 to 3 megahertz, right? Are you going to be in an energy deficit or an energy abundance? Deficit. And so your energy is going to be low. Now, let me ask you this. If your energy is low, will the organs of your body be working at their total functional peak efficiency, yes or no? So if they're not working efficiency, and let's say part of that is cleansing or providing what your body needs, 
then those systems start to shut down and you build up more toxic waste. That's just natural. Your body normally will get rid of it, but you're no longer having enough energy to function properly. So you go through this slow decline most people call aging. Does this make sense? So take a look here, if you would, and you'll see some of the other foods we've got here. Vitamins. I mean, most vitamins and mineral supplements are 10 to 30 megahertz, and that's if your body can absorb them. Raw almonds are 40 to 50 megahertz. If you saw me snacking during the break here, I grabbed something. That's raw almonds I have up here. I have cucumbers, too, which are super high. Uh, your liver is 55 to 60 megahertz. Your colon, 58 to 63. Your stomach, 58 to 65. Top of your head, 60 to 70. Your feet. So you can see your body is basically in that 60 to 70 range. Fruits do provide. You see this? They provide a lot of energy. They're alive. Green vegetables are the highest, 70 to 90 megahertz. Plus, green vegetables, ladies and gentlemen, are extremely what? Anybody know? Alkaline. We want alkalinity, and green vegetables are some of the most alkaline things you can take into your body. Next is you'll see uh, live, fresh wheatgrass, 70 to 90. Your brain is 72 to 78. How many of you love a rose? Like you get in the presence of a rose or you smell a rose, it just feels really great. How many have that feeling? Say, I. A rose has 320 megahertz coming out of it. It's like you get this charge. All flowers don't do that, so you do they? Some have more than others. And what the feelings you're having are actual electrical charges that you can experience if you measure them. It's, it's fascinating. And then I'm going to show you a green drink that's between 250 and 350 megahertz. When you drink it, you'll feel like an immediate sense of charge of energy because all the charges your cells need are available immediately, plus it's alkaline. So it's available there. Now, how many would agree that the real challenge that most people have is not some bug is attacking them, but the real challenge that they have is their environment has basically been compromised. That they've done things probably in their lifestyle, consciously or unconsciously, that have put the body in a weakened state, has caused the environment to be polluted, and now problems are building on top of each other. How many buy that theory? Say, I. Okay, if you buy that theory, then the question is, how do we get there? How do we get imbalanced? And then the second question, the more important one is, how do we get that balance back quickly? The first thing that happens that takes us out of balance is there's a disturbance. Now, what could disturb our bloodstreams, disturb our environment? Well, as I start out with again, negative thoughts, negative words, negative actions, those emotions, do they have an impact on our bloodstream, yes or no? Absolutely. And you can feel it, can't you? You know it's visceral. You know your whole body starts to shift when you go into these states. Now, after you have that experience, try adding to that a polluted environment. Do you think breathing, I should say, all the smog in the air makes you alkaline or acid? What would your common sense say? Totally makes you acidic. Okay? Now, LA's air is a lot better than it was before. Most of the country is getting better, fortunately, but it still affects us. Acid diets. What's an acid diet? A diet that's made up of animal proteins is acid. A diet made up of a lot of cooked oils is acid. A diet that's made up of a lot of sugar is acid. A diet made up of a lot of carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates, you know, processed carbohydrates, like pastas, etc. It's going to have a lot of sugar. Sugar, just think sugar equals acid and acid equals glue. That's a good way for you to think about it. The outside of the red blood cell is a negative charge. That's what keeps them repelling. The inside is positive. But what happens is when you put yourself in a position where you have this acid, it strips that charge, and now these cells start to collect. They start to move and become unhealthy. When they start banging into each other, and you can see it in people's bloodstreams, you can see the difference in what happens there between a healthy bloodstream where the red blood cells are big and plump and alive and round versus you see these misshapen cells, and you see these cells starting to break down, and very often you see things like parasites starting to break out of the cell, literally. You see it rip out of the cell. It's a very scary thing to see. Radiation can do this. We're in front of these screens all the time, most of us, right, using computers now. We have all this stuff that we don't know the impact on. So we don't have to live crazily, but we want to avoid any excess radiation because could that disturb the delicate balance, could it, of the electrical magnetic part of your body, yes or no? Clearly. So those disturbances start there. And then any kind of other destructive behavior or emotion. Now, once you have a disturbance, think of this. Irritation leads to mutation. Right? That's where it can go. So when something gets irritated, it gets out of balance. It gets out of balance. It either weakens, dies, or mutates. So irritation leads to mutation. So what happens is when you have a disturbance, the second thing happens is cells become disorganized. 
they change basically to try and deal with an environment that's different because life wants to live. I mean, when you even think about cancer, cancer cells are cells that are striving to live so much that they can even expand like crazy in an environment where there's no oxygen. So they mutated and now they're growing more rapidly than you want them to. It's actually life moving forward and it's adapting to the environment we give it to. So when you disturb yourself, some disturbances are huge. A car accident, is that a significant disturbance to your body? You bet. That ruptures cells. When you rupture cells, do you think there's more acid in the body or less? Quick. More acid. The body's going to deal with that. You know, so much of it, it can really be a trauma to the system. But when you get disturbances, cells disorganize so they can adapt to this environment. As they do that, the third step is you get a compromised environment. What that means is cells start to really adapt now to this morbid environment, this environment that is not healthy. And all of a sudden now you have healthy cells becoming what? Unhealthy cells. I mean, you can see this in the microscope with people in their bloodstreams. And all of a sudden you have these things called germs that start to grow like crazy, like bacteria and yeast and fungus and molds. Because now you've created an environment in which they can feed. You've created a place where they get to live. Now what's really fascinating, and you'll see this at Mastery, and this will sound insane to my doctor friends in the room, but I took uh, Dr. Solomon, who's on the UN Board of Aging, and he's the head of the uh, Council for Health and Illness, I guess it is, for the United Nations. He's also from Johns Hopkins University, he's the head of nutrition there. Traditionally trained guy, and I brought him about two months ago. He was supposed to go for two hours, because I said, I've seen things in the bloodstream that traditional biology would never say is possible. I've seen a red blood cell literally not be attacked from the outside, but literally when the environment became acid, start to morph and become a rod form, a bacteria. We think of bacteria coming from the outside. Here's this red blood cell like a butterfly morphing and becoming another kind of cell. And then morphing back later when it went to an alkaline part of the body, back into red blood cell. It's all caught in videotape. It's called pleomorphism. It's supposed to be impossible. And he's captured this several times because this guy's whole focus is the blood. He does everybody's blood and he studies it and watches it. So I called Dr. Solomon and I said, all I can tell you, I've never felt better in my life. I see my blood is so pure. I've seen my blood go and now the red blood cells are big and plump because my body's alkaline. I got enough water in the system. I'm not dehydrated. My energy is amazing. I said, I've always had high energy, but not where it was like I had such reserves. That's the best word I can give to you. I have reserve now before I could do it and I was going through my reserves, you know? I said, come take a look. We'll fly out for me. He said, okay, I'll go check it out. He said, yeah, I'm going to these two places. I'll stop for two hours. He stopped for two days. And he called me up and he said, this is unbelievable. He said, I, I want to test that. He's going to do a study at uh, Harvard Medical School. He's trying to arrange one and at Johns Hopkins to be able to show the impact that this has on the bloodstream to show that this has occurred. He wants to be able to duplicate what he's seen. But he said, this is unbelievable because we always think of the outside world attacking us. He said, what I'm seeing is that the inside environment just like with HIV, they say it, and now, now they say for these viruses that the reason they can't stop it is because it keeps what? Mutating into something else. Well, our red blood cells de-differentiate and become something else. What happens is this starts to create this buildup of these bacteria, yeast, molds, and guess what they do? They're creatures, right? They're feeding now on your energy stores, and like all living things, they feed on things, and what do all living things also do? They excrete their waste, and their waste are pure acid. So not only are you building the acid up from your lifestyle, but you're now creating an environment where these things proliferate and or adapt. Now on top of that, they put their own waste in, which brings you to the fourth level of imbalance. Now you have debilitating acids growing so that the waste products from those unhealthy cells pollute the environment, and they start to impact the quality of even the healthy cells now. And so more disturbances, more disorganization of cells, worse environment, more acids, and now you're going to what most people think of as debilitating diseases or aging or whatever the case may be. It's an acid problem that comes from disturbance. Now, let me just tell you this. It takes four parts of alkalinity to balance out or neutralize one part of acid. That's why most people are so acid. So... What's neat about the blood and what's neat about the foods is you can see it. You know, it's not this little, oh, I'm going to take this supplement and hope it's okay. I mean, you can see it and you can feel it. You have both experiences. So here's a cycle of balance. Number one, you must cleanse. How many of you think you've built up some toxicity and some acid through your lifestyle up until now? How many think you're certain about that? Say, I. Trust me, you don't need a blood test to know that, okay? So you got to cleanse. Now, what you want to do is super hydrate your system. 
Superhydrate means you're going to drink a lot more fluids than you normally do, but you're also going to drink fluids that are alkaline in nature. So you want to drink green drinks. Whether you drink hard drink or not, you can certainly do any other form of green drinks you want. If you go by any of these juicing places, you can get fresh green drinks. and There's all kinds of them that are alkaline, anything you want. But one of the most potent that most of you have heard about is wheatgrass. And the only thing with wheatgrass is it's very concentrated. So you've got to make sure you, you know, gear up for drinking wheatgrass. And wheatgrass has some benefits in that the chlorophyll in the plant captures the energy of the sun, which is basically life. We have to get that energy ultimately through the system. And so what happens for us is these, the uh, chlorophyll in the plant is what converts it to energy. And if you look at the molecular structure of wheatgrass, you look at your own bloodstream, you look at the molecular structure of your blood, it's almost identical. So it's almost like eating the greens or eating the chlorophyll is like taking the blood of the plants that's still alive when it's like that, just like it's giving yourself the ability to build your blood, and it's seen as a blood builder, there's quite a bit of scientific research on it. So you're welcome to drink that, or if you want, get some of this green drink. What's great about it is you can put it in any water you want, wherever you are, you can take it with you on the road, and you can take something. You start to get that place where you haven't eaten, and you're like, your blood sugar's going, you drink that, boom, you're solid. You'll have the fluids that you need, you won't be dehydrated, your blood sugar will be even, and your energy will start sparking because all that electricity, all that energy is available for your body immediately. But what you're going to want to do to cleanse ideally is seven to ten days would be the ideal. Seven to ten days where you would literally go on pretty much a liquid diet. You'd be doing green drinks, green soups, there are a variety of choices in there that you can go through during that time. The minimum you'd want to do is probably three to four days. We say, I'm just going to cleanse my system. I'm going to give all my organs a break. I'm not going to add more crap on there. I'm going to give them a rest and let my body just flush the system out. This would be the ideal. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do that if you don't want to do that. I'll tell you what to do that's more gentle and more simple. But this type of cleansing is not painful. In fact, you'll start to learn after a few days, if you do the 7 to 10 day one, you'll notice after about day three, you don't have any hunger at all. In fact, you'll realize that if you start to go eat, it's almost like, God, I'm not hungry. And you'll notice you're really doing it because you're frustrated. Are you really doing it because you feel lonely? Are you really doing it because there's some other emotion you're trying to feel? And you, since you're not eating, you won't eat, and you'll notice it. And it'll help you to break the emotional patterns that are controlling you as well. If you wanted to absolutely give your body the ultimate gift, it would be to go on a cleanse. So you want to drink at least three liters of this type of green drink a day. Three liters. Like uh, for me, did they put one? Well, you can see this is what I drink the whole time I'm here, if you haven't noticed. This is it. All weekend long, I'm drinking this. By the way, the green drink doesn't taste bad. It doesn't taste good either. It's kind of neutral, you know. But this size is 1.5 liters. So you're going to want at least two of these a day. I drink one of these in the morning, first thing, total energy. That's what I did this morning. I put the green drink in, shake it up, ready to rock and roll. I'll tell you what else I do. I drink one of these or at least half before I eat something. What do you think that does? hunger is gone, you don't overeat, you also feel more alkaline, so some of the things you'd normally be addicted to, you'll find that addiction starts disappearing really fast. So, we want to cleanse. How many understand what we want to do here? Say, I. What's the key word to cleansing? We don't want to hurt our bodies, we want to super what? And by the way, in a cleanse, you would ideally not bring any of the food in, right? This super hydration is not just seven to ten days, this is every day for me. Does that make sense? If I'm really super hydrating, then for me, I'm drinking three of these. Okay, to give you an idea. Maybe even four sometimes, which I thought would be impossible. But I'll tell you what, if you do that for just three or four days, if you guys did nothing out of this day, he said, that Robbins, yeah, he's a nice guy, he's a little crazy, but I'll do this for three or four days. By the fourth day, you won't believe how good you feel. I mean, aches and pains and stuff you have will be gone because you have so much alkalinity in your system, your body will have a buffer to deal with that stuff. It's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we cleanse. Second thing we do to get back in balance is we interrupt the destructive pattern that's creating the problem. So that pattern might be the way you're using your emotions. You go, you know what? I learned all this stuff this weekend. I'm not going to indulge in this anger stuff. I'm doing anger. And I'm doing depression. Let me breathe. Let me change. And you make a shift. Maybe the pattern is you know you keep eating like hell. you got to break the pattern. Because if we cleanse and then you go back and start doing the same stuff, eventually you'll be back in an acid state again. Does that make sense? Now, by doing all this alkalinity on a regular basis, you start to balance it. But remember, you don't want to build up any more acid than you need to. Then the third step is we need to provide the body what it really needs. Once we take control of those patterns, provide it what it needs. And there's a metaphor that says every man needs a good woman. In fact, every woman needs a good woman, like a good mom. <laughs> okay. All right. 
And what woman stands for is you've got to give the body what it needs, which number one is what? Water. Number two is oxygen. Does that sound familiar? Number three is minerals. And again, it's not only minerals, but you'll find, how many of you know of a genetic weakness that you have, either by your family history or by yourself, like a heart or lungs or something of that nature? How many are familiar with that? If you know a genetic weakness, you want to provide those minerals or needs directly there, and you can do your own research. Um, you've got A for woman is alkalis, and N is provide the nutrition and diet. What that will allow you to do is put your body back in balance. When it's in balance, your biochemistry is where it needs to be. The electrical charges are there. The cells are vibrant. They're alive. There's lots of what? energy and you start feeling good being good you think differently you feel differently your skin changes everything shifts in your life when you put yourself back in balance so how do you get balanced number one is what cleanse number two is break the pattern by taking control and number three is provide what it is you need now here's what we've done so far we've freed ourselves if we're intelligent at this stage from fear because we understand things don't just attack us. We've got to create an environment that feeds it. How many buy that? Say aye. Two, we've identified specifically the foundation of this, which is getting out of balance because we create disturbances or we get an environment that disturbs ourselves. They disorganize. They get an environment now that's compromised. They mutate. They respond. Those beings or those creatures create their own waste products, and those acids then continue the cycle until we get more and more unhealthy. We know to get balanced, we gotta what? What's the first step? What? Cleanse. I want you to remember that because the way we're gonna live is one that's a cleansing lifestyle, not a clogging lifestyle. And right? we're gonna have that as part of our mindset. Second thing we're gonna do is gonna take control by interrupting patterns that don't serve us. And third thing is we're gonna provide the body with the core nutrients it needs, a good woman. I doubt if there's anyone who wants to argue everyone doesn't need a good woman in their life, right? All right, back to me personally now. As we wrap this up, here's the secret to this. First of all, does it make sense to you that you've got to provide your body with more alkalinity to stay in balance? Sure it does, because we all live stressful lifestyles, acid lifestyles. And you've got to remember that if you're going to live an acid lifestyle by the way you eat or by your stress, the way you're living, remember it takes four parts of alkalinity to balance out one part of acid. If you'll just create this balance in your life by drinking more water, by drinking a green drink or wheatgrass, giving yourself enough greens, the changes can be miraculous. I've seen it in my own health and energy and the people that I care about and the people I meet every day. It's such a simple change. All it is is making a simple addition to your life, yet the improvements in your life are so radical, it's almost hard to imagine. I'll give you a really good example. I had a young man who was sent to me by the Make-A-Wish Foundation. His name is Sean. And Sean came to me because, as often, the Make-A-Wish Foundation will say, this is a person's last wish. He'd like to meet you. So what I usually do is I say, have him come to one of my three-day seminars if they're physically capable. We'll do whatever it takes to make them comfortable because in those three days, and that revolution for their life, and that Unleash the Power Within program, they're going to experience things that will shift their beliefs, their emotions, their entire life. And then I'll spend time with them afterwards for an hour or two just hanging with them, as opposed to just having lunch. So in this case, they brought me this young boy, Sean. I think he was 21 or 22 years old at the time. Unfortunately, he had stunted growth, and he didn't stand much taller than my knee. He was in a wheelchair. His bones were so brittle that when he came to do the seminar, and it was time to do the part of that seminar called Fear and the Power, the first part of the seminar is teaching people how to overcome any fear and take action in spite of it. It's the thing that stops us all. So it's a pretty powerful seminar. And that very first night, I have people walk across a bed of burning hot coals between 1,200 and 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. No one has to, but everybody ends up doing it. Because once you see how to break through your fears and you know what to do, you just take action, and everything shifts. After doing that, anything else you thought was difficult seems pretty easy by contrast. So. He couldn't physically walk, obviously. And so his parents handed him to me, and as his dad was about to hand him to me, he said, open your hands and just hold him in your open hands. And he said, don't squeeze at all. If you squeeze at all, you'll break his bones. If he coughs, he breaks a rib. That's why his prognosis was for death soon. His bones were that brittle, if you can imagine. So I held him in my hands, and I put myself in state, and I walked across the fire holding him. It was really a beautiful experience. He cried afterwards. It was, it was amazing. So then he attends the rest of the seminar, and he begins to develop some stronger beliefs on what's possible. 
So I sat down with him after the third day, and we sat down for lunch. I said, tell me what you believe about all this. He said, well, I believe there's got to be an answer, but no one's been able to give me one. I said, well, you know, I'm not a doctor, and I can't tell you what to do. But I know a couple of experts that understand acid alkaline, and I explained to them the very principles that you've learned here. And I said, i got to believe that if your bones are so brittle that they're breaking when you cough or sneeze, you've got to have an enormously acidic body. Now, some of that can be genetic, I'm sure, but I believe if you talk to some of these people, they might be able to make you at least more comfortable, and who knows? It might save your life. If you're interested in doing it, I said, I'll send you, I'll pay for the flight, and you can go check it out for yourself. And I'm not telling you have to do this. Just decide if it makes any sense to you. And if you do, use it. If you don't, don't. So I sent him to see one of these experts. And he ended up staying there for three days with this person. He changed his entire diet. Now, again, his prognosis was terminal. I spoke to his mother, and I spoke to him, and he was feeling better and better each day. Well, that could be anecdotal, obviously. Interestingly enough, within six months, he was still not only alive, but he was stronger than ever. He was able to cough or sneeze without any fear. Within 12 months, and if you saw him today, he showed up at one of my seminars to surprise me one day. I hadn't seen him in a year. And he rolled up. He was still in his wheelchair. But he said, let me show you what I can do now. He got out of his wheelchair and did push-ups. He pulled up his stomach and showed me he had a six-pack on his stomach. He's now lecturing all across the country. He's been written up in various newspapers as this wonder kid. And he's telling everybody what you can do to transform your body is by understanding how to give your body what it needs. His prognosis is no longer death. Here's a young man who literally has his life back. Now, your situation is probably nowhere near as extreme as that. Maybe it's a lowered sense of energy. Maybe it's you just want to really get those last 5 or 10 or 15 pounds off. You've got to give yourself every advantage you can. That's what Get the Edge is about. So what do you got to do? Let's remind yourself. Just make sure you take action when we turn off this tape. You don't go, that's an interesting principle. Well, I should think about that. No. Make sure you start cleansing right away. Start drinking plenty of water. I'll give you a ratio. Half your body weight in ounces. If you're 200 pounds, that's 100 ounces in a day. You go, you got to be kidding. You're going to drown me, Robbins. No, we're going to cleanse you, and we're going to get that liquid in your body so the acid gets out. If you want to, another way to do this again is to get green drinks. They're so alkaline. So you can go get yourself something like wheatgrass, which doesn't taste pleasant at first, but that's because your body's acid. Once you start drinking it for a while, your body won't be as acid. It'll actually have a sweet taste to it. Or you can call us for our green drink. And if you do that, you can get a green drink. You can mix in water. You can take it on the road. You don't have to worry about finding wheatgrass. And it's just as effective, in some cases more, because there's more than one type of green. And it's been specially formulated by Dr. Alex Guerrero, the man I told you about. has such extraordinary results with people like Shaquille O'Neal and a lot of other peak performance athletes and teams. But he also uses the same process of alkalinity to get people healthy who have been diagnosed as terminally ill. So if you're interested in drinking that green drink, give us a call. You can reach us at 1-877-GO-4-GREEN. That's G-O-4-GREEN. Or the real number for those you can't remember, go for green, is simple. 877-464-4733. Again, if you're interested in getting the green drink or any of our Inner Balance products, all designed by Dr. Guerrero, give us a call at 877-464-4733. But you can do it on your own. You don't have to do it with us. There are many ways to get your body in balance. Do whatever makes sense to you, but do something so you can get started right away. Remember, don't ever leave the site of understanding or of setting a goal without doing something towards its attainment. It's time for you to have more energy, isn't it? Isn't it time for you to get your life at the highest level of energy possible? If it is, make sure you do something right now. We talked about it here. If you want to experience more energy than you've ever had before, call us or do something now as soon as this tape is done. Our next session is about the mastery of emotion.